here's Pixie in the warm light. Here's Pixie in the cool lighting, as I blind myself. And here's Pixie all in her glory. If anybody ever says they do their content perfectly in the first shot, I would like to meet that person and shake their hand because, honey, it ain't happening on this channel. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the Pixie Palace. <laughs> and as you can see behind me is my sidekick, Timmy, who refuses to leave this chair so I can actually be comfortable and sit down. So I'm sitting on the edge of the chair with my usual cup of tea here to hang out with you guys for a little bit. And I hope everybody is doing well out there. I'm super excited doing some batch content creating today. And I wanted to just catch up with you, all of you. 2023 really started off in a way I didn't expect. Now, nothing bad has happened. Nothing stupendous has happened. It was just a different energy than I expected it to. And I think a lot of people are feeling the same thing. 2022, as I said in one of my previous videos, has been a journey. And it's been a very good year overall. A lot of blessings came into my life. And a lot of growth um, in my spirituality occurred. However, there were some pitfalls like every year has, and it was really, really a trying time in some points of that year. And I was all ready for 2023, just ready to uh, hit the ground running the minute January came around. Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> and like I said, nothing bad happened. It was just a matter of taking pause and still reflecting, still finalizing some of the teachable and healing moments that I had in 2022. And to be very transparent, December is a little bit of a tough month for me. While in the past it never really was, but in the past couple years it really has been because of losing some people in my life uh, through the natural cycle of life and just some anxiety issues and holiday blues, all that. But I came through it well, and uh, I did a lot of shadow work, a lot of inner struggle, but also came out of it uh, feeling a lot more rejuvenated. Um, my energy has shifted in a positive way. And it's really interesting because um, some of those triggers that I was dealing with uh, aren't as intense anymore, and some of them are not even there. Now, of course, the learning journey when you go within and really work on those triggers and traumas and uh, wounds that you might have accumulated throughout your years um, is never really over because once you stop doing the inner work you're going to stay stuck you're going to stay exactly where you are and maybe never really 100 percent heal so all that work is necessary in the way that aligns for you so right now I'm really in a good energy and I'm taking advantage of that. So I'm doing more content. I know my channel has been a little bit quiet. Um, there's been a lot of ambience on. There was even a movie. But um, I really wasn't feeling it enough to come back and do new content. Now I'm starting to feel that again. So let's hit the ground running now. In this process, I've noticed that um, something that reminded me of a lesson I probably should have learned um, in the past, but being a human being, of course, you're going to sometimes forget things because you get wrapped up in daily life and in events that are going on. And it's very easy to lose sight of some of those lessons you've learned until you learn it again. <laughs> As you have seen in my past videos, I've talked about the be, do, have philosophy. And it's a real true principle. When we tell ourselves a story, we actually limit ourselves. A lot of us have been uh, conditioned or grew up in circumstances that we were expected to be a certain identity or we weren't given enough space to really tap within, see what our authenticity is and what our truth is. It really keeps us in a box. Now you've heard me say this a lot in my videos and I'm really, really learning more and more about this in myself. 
I always believe authenticity is very important. When we start doing the cookie cutter way of doing things because everyone else is or we're trying to keep up with the Joneses, it really doesn't serve us well. Yes, it may work for some time, but we really just become like sheep in a sense, for lack of a better phrase. We become like everybody else. And I don't think that's what we're supposed to do in this world. We're supposed to be ourselves because there's no one exactly like each of us. And we are here to express our truth, express our authenticity, and really, really empower others to be themselves as well in whatever way we do it. Um, it could be through video content. It could be by doing uh, a certain profession or um, just being there for our community. We don't even really have to do anything. We can just be ourselves and just be. Sometimes that alone can have a ripple effect on those around us. So when I say that we attach ourselves to a story, um, some I know for the longest time I was always like, well, I have to be strong for everybody else. I have to be happy for everybody else. And uh, I can't show any other emotions because um, people won't take me seriously or people won't like it. And I was always worried about what others thought. And it took me a long time to realize that I am human like everybody else. Okay, human pixie. And I have emotions like everybody else. We're not always one emotion. While we may show that as a default setting, and for me, being happy is a default setting, I am a positive person, I do feel anxiety, I do feel anger, I feel disgust, sadness, um, sometimes I feel silly, sometimes I feel sexy, other times I feel like nothing, I could care less. So I have all those well-rounded emotions and ways of being just like everyone else. Um, I think when I was doing the inner work, a lot of that uh, always having to be happy and strong came from all the medical things I went through as a child and teenager uh, because it was a way I was able to cope with everything. It was a way I could get through all that. And even though it was really tough going through all the surgeries that I did, I am very grateful that I did because it prolonged my life and I am here now being able to talk to you guys. So it really was worth it to improve my health and improve my way of life. But it was really, really hard. And a lot of the time I would encounter people who were maybe even worse off than I was in the hospitals or doctor's offices. So for some reason, I took on that identity of being strong for them, helping them get through their pain or path and I'm still a little like that but more of in a constructive positive way. Um, I don't abandon myself anymore like I used to. I used to put everybody's needs before my own and while that may be a noble thing it doesn't work in the long term. Once you ignore yourself and put everybody's needs before your own you will notice your energy gets depleted very quickly. You may keep deal with depression and anxiety. You may even lack self-worth. Or you may feel disempowered because nobody else realizes you're going through tough times as well. And it's really, really important we take care of ourselves, take care of our mental health, our physical health, and our spiritual health, whatever that may be. Society's conditioning that self-care was being selfish. Well, it's not selfish when we do it in the right way. And what I mean by the right way is actually filling your own cup first before you help others. Um, that is not a selfish thing to do. It's actually a selfless thing to do. And it actually helps others. So in a way, you are helping others taking care of yourself. Because if you can't show up fully 100%, you can't help others to the full capacity and it really does have an effect on those people as well as everyone around them it's a ripple effect so everything you do all the inner work all the the healing the processing the really sitting with the emotions and the energy that you need to transmute really does have an effect on your outer reality
That's why they say the outer reality is a mirror to what is going on inside. And I've noticed that a lot of people I've been encountering and engaging with are starting to understand that. They're starting to awaken to that truth. And the more of us that take that time and realize that it is okay to take care of yourself, it is okay to sit with those emotions, really process it and face it, even if it's scary and even if you're afraid, do it afraid. Because once you do that, you'll unlock that healing. You'll unlock your true authenticity and you won't be afraid to show up in your own truth. So I hope you guys are all doing well. I love you guys. There'll be more content coming your way very soon. But until the next time, to know yourself is to know your truth. Namaste. So I've noticed that some of the triggers I was feeling aren't as intense and I just talked over my microphone. Yes, that's, that's awesome. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> oh, they stood right up. Hey, that's a good balance. <laughs> yes, yeah, isn't that wonderful? Oh my freaking lord. <laughs> ah, I told you I'm a hot mess. Shh, my nipples off. <laughs> and Timmy don't give a shit, apparently. Now you know what TDGAF means, if you haven't figured it out already. Or, or tell ourselves a story that we won't get through something, and I keep knocking over the mic. Let's see if I can do it a third time in this video. God. Oh my god. Let's count together. How many times I do this? Stay where you're supposed to. Before I was rudely interrupted by this microphone dropping on the floor. <laughs> and a couple new things that I have no idea about. And Timmy's staring up in the ceiling. I have no idea what's going on. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> welcome back. Oh my god, I'm a hot man.